So what's with all these tiny wireless mic systems? In this video, we'll take a look at the Voicel Air from Pixel to help you decide whether this audio accessory will help you elevate your audio productions. Thanks for watching this Gadget Talk video. On this channel, we look at photography and videography tools and accessories, some ham radio items, and other cool toys that catch my attention. Please click on the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I'd really appreciate it. Now, on with the review. Rode brought out a new product in late summer 2019 that shook up the wireless microphone market. They called it the Rode Wireless Go microphone. There were two things that set this mic apart from many wireless mic systems. First was the fact that it was digital and used the 2.4 GHz frequency band. Devices in this band use digital frequency hopping schemes of one type or another to hop from frequency to frequency and sometimes also listen for digital information during a specific portion of the time the signal is broadcast. These schemes allow devices to avoid interference and not be tied down to a particular channel as is done in the UHF and VHF frequency bands. These devices also don't require much in terms of antennas since the wavelength is so short. You'll know you're working with a 2.4 GHz product if the transmitter and the receiver bind to one another instead of using matching channels. The second thing that sets the wireless GO system apart was its form factor. Both the transmitter and receiver are small rectangles just a couple of inches square. This form factor revolution caused a bunch of manufacturers to produce similarly sized devices. To stay in the low price sub $130 price range, these new sets stayed with the UHF frequency band. If you have looked on Amazon recently, you'll see several nearly identical sets under a couple of different brand names. My guess is they came from the same factory and might have slightly different firmware driving their radio and audio functions. The Pixel Voicel Air is one of those releases that became available on Amazon in May of 2020. Let's take a quick look at the size differences between the Pixel Voicel Air and a more traditional Pixel UHF wireless mic set. In this case, this is a Pixel WM10 traditionally sized wireless mic set. Like the Voicel Air, it works in the UHF frequency band. It's got an external microphone here and a little bit of an antenna. This is a transmitter device. The receiver looks just like it. Now compare that with the Voicel Air. This is the Voicel Air transmitter and you can see it's only about one quarter the size. And so the size difference between the Voicel Air and the traditional belt mounted UHF style wireless mic system is striking. As I said before, the Voicel Air is a UHF band set. It has 36 separate channels in the upper 500 megahertz part of the UHF band. Both the transmitter and receiver have to be on the same channel. Multiple channels are available to allow you to change channels if you find interference on a particular frequency or if you find yourself in an area where more than one wireless mic set is being used. Let's take a closer look at the Voice Layer set and what comes in the kit. So here's the box that the, uh, the Voice Layer comes in. It's a pretty small box, pretty small device. It's got some of the marketing information on it, pretty typical some specifications on the back, and of course the ever popular warnings and safety information. So let's look inside and what we've got there. So inside the box is this nice little travel case. It's kind of a, a neoprene kind of uh, material with a nice zipper that closes it up and it holds everything nicely. 
You can see that I've taken things out of the uh, their individual wrappers already just to speed things along here. But we've got the uh, transmitter and receiver, a um, cold shoe mount, and then room for the cables. So let's look at each of those specifically. So we've got a little bit of paperwork in here, uh, an invitation to uh, sign up to be a product tester, uh, the information about the, how to use the Loisel Air. Uh, they've got diagrams and step-by-step -step instructions, uh, and then they do this in several different languages. So the entire book isn't uh, just one language, it's a multi-language instruction book. Here we've got a couple of USB-C cables. You know, the, the typical USB-A on one end, the USB-C on the other. And there's two of them to charge both the receiver and the uh, transmitter separately. So that's handy. You can put them both on chargers or you can use them both with battery blocks uh, to run them um, pretty much continuously through the charge cable and your power source. There are two sets of cables that come with the Voicel Air. Um, the first is for use with a smartphone, and that you can tell it's got the gray tip on it, and then it's got a tip ring ring sleeve uh, plug, which is typical for most smartphones, with a TRS for the transmitter side. So this is wired for smartphones. This cable, on the other hand, has got tip ring sleeve connections on both sides, and so that's wired for camcorders, cameras, uh, and digital audio recorders. So um, both cables come with it, so that makes it handy. There's nothing extra that you need to buy. The next little accessory we have here is just a cold shoe mount. You can slide this on the top of your camera, and there's a quarter 20 plug there, and so uh, you can just kind of move that uh, down to tighten it up nice and tight. And then there's a nice mounting bracket here at the top for the receiver, because this will normally be mounted on the camera or on the recorder. So with that in mind, um, it works pretty slick in that these have little belt clips on them. And so with the belt clip, we can just open it up and then slide it right into that little um, slot on the top of this adapter, and which will allow you to keep the, uh, the transmitter mounted firmly. So let's take a closer look at the, um, the main components here of this mic system. This is the transmitter for the Voiclair. And so we've got the screen here at the bottom. We'll power it on and take a look at that here in just a moment. On this side is the Class C or the USB-C connection that you can use to power or to recharge the microphone system. Here on the top of the system are two three and a half millimeter uh, sockets. One is for headphones that you can plug in and monitor the sound that the receiver is picking up. And then this one with this kind of um, icon that looks kind of like a fountain pen uh, is for the line out and it is the line from the receiver to your camera or recorder. On this side is the power button. You hold it down for a couple seconds and the screen will come on and the device will become live. It's also a mute button with a short press. And then here on the bottom are three buttons that you can use to make uh, some choices, uh, plus or minus uh, when the thing is on, allows you to change the output of the of the receiver, so you can go up or down uh, by pressing the respective buttons. Uh, and then the setting button there with the little gear, a quick press on it will turn you into setting mode, which will allow you to change the channel. And then last but not least, here on the back of the receiver is a little spring belt clip. And what's really kind of cool about this is that the top edge of this is what fits inside that uh, camera cold shoe mount. So here's the Voicle Air uh, microphone system transmitter and it looks just like the receiver pretty much from the front. What we're going to notice here is that while the receiver had uh, a monitoring socket and a line out socket, the transmitter here has a microphone socket where you can plug in the um, lavalier mic and then a built-in microphone. You've got, you see it's got a little silver grid here. So you can clip this to the placket of your shirt and use it uh, with this microphone. Or if you want to be a little more discreet, the lav mic will allow you to do that and you plug the lav mic in here. On this side, you've got the USB-C port. You're going to use the USB-C to charge the, the internal battery for this. And then you can, like you can with the receiver, you can run the transmitter with a USB cord from a USB um, power device, whether it's plugged into a wall or whether it's a phone um, charging block. 
On the bottom, you've got the same switches. Let me turn those around for you here. Um, the plus and minus allows you to change the volume uh, or the power at which this is transmitting to the receiver. And uh, so plus or minus, and the number goes up. You'll see that on the screen in just a moment. And like the receiver, the transmitter has a setting button where a short press will allow you to then use the plus and minus buttons to change the channels on which the um, transmitter is transmitting on. Again, on the back, there's a little belt clip here that you can use to uh, clip to your shirt or to your belt. And then on this side is the power button uh, and a long press to turn it on and off and a short press to move it into mute mode. So let's do a quick uh, power on tour here. This is the transmitter. It's the one that has the microphone on it. So we'll press the on off button and it's come on. And you can see that there's a, you know, kind of a VU meter that goes across the uh, front uh, of the screen. It shows that the microphone is receiving sound. Uh, the battery there shows it's about two thirds charged. You can see that it's on channel one, that channel one is 570.15 megahertz, and the output is set at 12 dB. Now, if we press the minus button, you'll see that we can change the output, 11, 10, nine, eight, and then the plus button will make it uh, make it go up. And so as you work with the receiver and with your camera, you can make some adjustments here to ensure that you've got the right level of power that gives you the, the kind of sound that you're happy with. A quick press of that setting button has got the channel um, icon blinking. It just stopped, so let's press it again. There it's blinking, and now if I press the plus button, I'm up to channel two, up to channel three, up to channel four, and then down to channel four, three, two, and one. And so that'll give me a chance to change the channels if I find that I have interference on the channel that I've originally got selected. Again, we'll press the on off button on the receiver and it comes on and um, it says RX there at the top. So you can see that's receiver. This particular battery shows fully charged coming out of the box. Uh, and then again, over here, you see the, the V12. So that's the volume. So if I press the little minus button here on the bottom, you'll see that that goes down. Minus nine, volume eight, and so forth. And so I can make adjustments there just uh, by pressing those buttons. No need to go into any menu mode or anything like that. As with the receiver, a quick press on the, the gear button or the settings button, you can see that the channel starts to flash. And again, by clicking the plus button, the channels increment. And by pressing the minus button, the channels um, decrement, gets smaller. Now with um, them both here on channel one, uh, 570.15 megahertz. If I speak to this, and now you can see that I do have those little lines blinking, uh, showing that it is receiving from the microphone here of the transmitter. And so that's what you'd be looking for. Unfortunately, this really doesn't show signal strength. Uh, that would be nice, but it's not to be. So it does show the connection and makes that uh, pretty handy to see what you've got. So why use a lav mic in the first place? Good question. As mics get further away from the speaker, they pick up a greater proportion of the background or ambient sound. This comes across as weak dialogue or echoes if you're recording indoors. This is the same regardless of the mic's quality or price. It's just a fact that good dialogue has to be recorded with a mic that's within 6 to 24 inches of the speaker. If dialogue is important, a lav mic or a sound guy with a mic boom chasing the speaker around will be necessary. Since we're all used to television personalities wearing lav mics, they're fairly unobtrusive and easily ignored. They're also pretty easy to hide if your project requires the mic to be invisible. As you'll see in these upcoming sample clips, a wireless lav mic like the Voicel Air will allow you to move around and gain some distance from the camera while sounding like you're standing right next to it. 
Besides adjusting volume, I've done no post-processing to these sample clips. So in this demo clip, we've got the, uh, the Voicel Air receiver connected to my Tascam DR05. I've made some adjustments to the um, volume coming out of the receiver. I've got it set at 13, and I have the volume on the um, transmitter set at 14. Plus, I made some adjustments here on the Tascam to get the output of my audio at the little carrot that you see under that second zero there in the display on the Tascam, right at that minus 12 decibel, which is pretty standard for um, recording purposes. So you can see that the, uh, uh, the lines on the receiver are flashing, indicating connection, and you can see that I'm getting good uh, audio levels into this Tascam dr 0 Five, using the built-in microphone with the transmitter clipped to the placket of my shirt just below my chin. Okay, now I'm speaking into the external lav mic plugged into the um, Voicel's transmitter, and you can see that the recording level in the Tascam is right there at that minus 12 dB point pretty well, and you can see the lines flashing here in the Voicel receiver. So uh, we've got that set pretty well. And the audio that you'll be listening to during this recording will be this audio without any um, post-processing done to it, just exactly how the Tascam recorded it coming from the wireless microphone system. So in this audio clip, we're using my Nikon D5300 DSLR style camera. I made adjustments in the transmitter and receiver of the uh, Voicel um, wireless microphone set. Those numbers were fairly high, and then I used the manual settings on the preamps in my camera, and those numbers ended up to be a little bit on the low side to get an input to the camera at that minus 12 decibel range that most people shoot for when doing videos. As you can see, I'm using the built-in microphone during this section of the sample, and it's clipped to the placket of my shirt, and I've got it on the inside of the shirt so that it's a little less visible but you can hear what it sounds like. Now, let's move to the external lavalier microphone and see what that sounds like. Okay, you can see that I've got the lav mic pinned to my shirt, pretty much the same place that the built-in mic was placed just a second ago. I've got the transmitter itself on my belt, and so this is what the external lavalier mic sounds like. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's what you can expect for sound going into a DSLR camera. I'm not going to make any changes in post-production to this audio, so you're going to hear it in the video the same as the camera heard it out here while we're making the recording. In this sound sample, we're going to be doing a range check. Now, for a lot of you, you're probably not too interested in this, frankly, because you're going to be using your wireless microphone for mobility, maybe around a kitchen or around a workshop or whatever. Most of what we're going to be dealing with here is going to be way out of the range that you would normally use this microphone. However, for those of you who may be shooting for a longer distance, let's see what the range for this thing is in a nice open area outside. I'm about six to eight feet away from the camera. Let me move down to about 20 meters. So I'm talking to the camera now from about 20 meters. Uh, one of the things I want to do at each of my stops is to turn the transmitter away from the receiver. So I've got the transmitter right here on my belt, and so I'm going to turn and face this direction to see if the, the mass of my body makes any difference to the ability to receive the signal. Sometimes that happens with these small low-power radios. So right now the transmitter is on the opposite side of my body as the receiver is. So we'll check and see how that sounds when we get back to the computer. Now let's move out to 40 meters. So right now I'm about 40 meters away from the camera. You have a chance to see what the microphone sounds like at this distance, starting to see whether we get any drop out or not. Again, let me turn to put my body between the, the transmitter and the receiver and see if it makes a difference at this range. So here we are with the transmitter opposite the receiver. 
with my body in the way. So that's the sound at 40 meters. Uh, so now let's move to 60. I'm going to talk a little bit on my way to 60 to see if we start getting any dropout at this range. So I'm headed to 60 meters right now. I've got the microphone. And I think you probably saw in that I mentioned that I was using the external lavalier microphone. I'm coming right up here now on 60 meters. This is 60 meters. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to turn. Now I'm talking with the transmitter blocked by my body in an otherwise open area. And so let's take the last few steps to get out to the advertised 70 meters. One, two, three, four, five, test, test, test. One, two, three, four, five. And now about at 70 meters in an open area. Hopefully we'll be getting some sound uh, at this range, but if not, we'll at least know what the practical range of this wireless microphone system is. One last time, I'll turn to put my body in between the transmitter and the receiver to see if it has any impact. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. With my body between the transmitter and the receiver. So I'm back here at the camera now and uh, uh, speaking through the wireless mic system. So we'll take this back in and see what the recording actually sounds like. I won't do any post-processing to this uh, audio other than perhaps raise or lower the volume. So let's go in and see what it sounds like. As you've seen and heard with its common 3.5 millimeter output and output volume controls, you can connect your voice cell air to a variety of recording devices. If your camera has good audio recording quality and manual audio adjustments, you can go direct to the camera and expect good results. For camera whose audio recording is subpar, you can record to a separate audio recorder or your smartphone and synchronize the audio and video in post-production. You could also connect your Voicel Air directly to a PA system if it takes a 3.5 millimeter plug or if you have a 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch adapter. As with all mics used with a PA, you'll need to position the speakers to avoid audio feedback. What's also cool is that when charging using a phone charging battery block, both the transmitter and receiver can operate and charge at the same time. That's not always the case with wireless mic sets. This can greatly increase your operating time. Speaking of operating time, I found that this set's transmitter to last about three to three and a half hours. The receiver went longer to about four or four and a half. That means the claim of six hours of battery time is a little generous. It's one of those specifications that may have been computed mathematically rather than with real-world tests. So does this little $100 mic outperform the $300 Rode Wireless Go? Not likely. While brand names do command a price premium, certainly not that much. The fact is that this little UHF mic is pretty good for what you're buying. What you're not buying is a $300 2.4 GHz wireless mic. So let's take a minute to wrap this up with some pros and cons. First, the pros. One definite pro is that the kit comes with everything you need, including a lav mic and cables necessary to connect to either a camera or recorder or to a smartphone. Next, the built-in mic allows you to use this as a make-do interview mic. The built-in mic can also work in a pinch if your lav mic gets lost or broken. 36 UHF channels seem more than enough to evade frequency interference during use. Sound quality is very reasonable right out of the receiver and can be adjusted using post-processing tools like Audacity. The small size and compact travel case makes it easy to take along. Last, 
The range is very reasonable for a compact system. Most creators will find they operate well inside the unit's range in all but the most extreme situations. Now for some cons. One con is that the little signal display on the transmitter and receiver screens doesn't seem to mean anything other than the two are connected. It would be nice if there was a sense of digital signal strength. Another con is that the advertised battery life is, well, as I said, generous. You can mitigate this con by using the phone charge block that you can use even while operating the system for virtually unlimited operating time. Don't let the YouTube video titles fool you. This is not a Rode Wireless Go killer. What it is, though, is a super upgrade from a camera-mounted mic when a hobbyist or an enthusiast-level content creator wants to up their audio game without breaking the bank. I'll include product links to the Voisel Air in the description below so you can easily find it on Amazon. Again, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.